Uh, I've been live, they're going to go live. But I'll um, tell you, it was a big celebration because Israel qualified for the World Baseball Classic in Brooklyn last week. So. Israel qualified for the World Baseball Classic. Is the that 16th like the... slot in the World Baseball Classic was up for grabs. A whole bunch of teams were in a big tournament and Israel won it. So oh. they're going in March yeah. South. Is that Korea. a big deal? Are they usually not in it? They're, they're never in it. Oh. <laughs> it's Israel. not an MIT competition. This is not Israel, Israel and baseball generally <laughs> don't mix, so oh, it's getting a little bit right. more popular cool. there. I didn't know that. And uh, yeah, it's a big deal. And people came out right. to the ballpark and we had a great time. To the point where baseball equipment in Israel is imported. like. A, like in people's suitcases. Like yeah. if you want to make a great donation, yeah. you bring baseball bats and gloves and whatever. And they have a little league team that is a travel team, but the equipment you can't. There's no models. You can't. There's you plenty can of buy stuff, a baseball right, There's plenty of stuff you can buy in Israel. There's yeah. more than enough stuff to buy in Israel, but baseball equipment is not one of them. Um, let me just quickly introduce you. Or you would well, tell me. I don't tell me your name again. Miriam Wallach. Wallach. I didn't know you last time. Wallach. Okay. So Nachum and Miriam. Are you both work at the radio station? Yes. Okay. I work for Nachum. Okay, so Nahum is if 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 you happen to be Jewish and you have ever owned a radio, like this is what it looks like. This is what radio and Judaism look like Sorry. together. Sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, I'm the Ed McMahon. This can I call you Ed? This is yeah, the sure. Ed McMahon of of Nahum's radio empire here uh, in, in New York. And what is your show called? Our uh, show's called JM in the AM. JM in the AM. Jewish moments in the morning. Oh, there's so many of them. Like, where do I even start with all the JMs in the AM? <laughs> I've uh, been doing that for 33 years. Okay. And we expanded five years ago. We became the Nahum Siegel Network. How we got the name, I have no idea. It's all right. Uh, it was a genius right. name. Okay. That Miriam actually insisted exactly. we... Exactly. Miriam, your name? Is you came up with it. Exactly. That yeah. was my name. I mean, actually, my parents, I think, would probably get some of the credit, right. you know? Well, but but the network part, she's I don't know if I was naming you, I'd go with Nahum. <laughs> It's a, a, a tough thing. Right. Well, we actually had this conversation. Right. No, Lance said, said really? She's like, no, no, because oh. of Jenna. Jenna's like, is that uh, really his name? Uh, I'm like, real life. For real life. I was like... Because the president today had a problem with the CH at the funeral of Shimon Paris. Oh, he did? Oh, he what did? happened? Yeah. He, uh, he, was, he was pronouncing, he was attempting to pronounce a uh, passage in Hebrew. And the passage is, Uba Charta Bahayim. And he said, Uba Charta Bahayim. Oh. So, you know. Maybe somebody should have just been English. I know. I'm surprised right. they That's even they put him to that test. I thought, you know, why would call. you put him in that type of situation? Is Who is it? I, I don't even recognize. Oh. But we should answer the phone next time and mess with their heads. So I used to do that at the Today Show when we used to go out to the plaza. You go say hello to everyone. Without fail, if I'm saying hello, someone's phone always rings. Right. So I, every single time without, I would just pick it up and say, Hello. Like, just have a full-on conversation on national television, because when else is that going to happen? Well, I'm the person who responds to other people speaking too loudly on Long Island Railroad. If somebody next to me or nearby all of a sudden answers their phone, which is a, not a thing to do. You know better, people. Anyway. And you're the one that says? I'm a, all of a sudden they'll be like, oh, hi, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Like, they're talking to the person on the phone, and I'm at oh, the you, other side. That's wonderful. Right, because if wonderful. you're going to screw with everybody, I'm going to join you're in. Screw with exactly. You. Oh, I love it. day in New York, folks. Listen. Right. If you didn't know that Miriam was from New York, you now know it. Exactly. <laughs> There's an attitude that, right. that you have to carry around with you in a knapsack or out, right. uh, within you or without. And you just, it's an air of, we're all going to be here. We're all close together. Yep. It's either too hot or too cold. And that's it. And that's it. And just, you do your thing, I'll do mine. Occasionally we'll say hi. We just came from a business trip this week in Europe, and I was... Shall, oh, this is funny. Shall we say getting frustrated with the leisurely pace in which people were There's walking. 24 million tourists in Venice <laughs> every year. <laughs> and she has no patience walking behind <laughs> tourists who are leisurely walking this on the street. This is me. Behind well, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Everybody go. I'm the same way. I'm walking down the street Let's now. Go. I'm like, on your left. Right. <laughs> on your left. And get off your phone and, and stop you, texting. Yeah, no. All of it, all of it. I also believe that between the hours of about 7 and 9 in the morning, tourists should not be allowed in Penn Station. Yeah, I understand. We have, we have places to go. Yeah. We have places or, to or, go. Or say Times Square. But right, no, anything, exactly. Or right. our commuters. Start um, our day late. Uh, We're really very friendly people. We're just you trying are. to give you some guidelines. So have you, Miriam, also been in the radio business for 33 years? Did you no. guys start together? These guys are not a couple, believe it or not. No. I still don't believe it, even though those are the words they're telling me. <laughs> they work together. They're wildly successful here in New York. You, you, If you know them, you understand. If you don't, check them out and you will understand. Um, so th 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 to do anything for 33 years. Yeah, I, it's I, a long time. The, the concept <laughs> of even being live for 33 years it's is hard for time. me to imagine. Yeah. You either are super, super good at it. Are making a ton of money, or you just love it more than anything in the world? Yeah, it's it's probably the third. I'm I, I'm absolutely in love with radio. Always have been, 
and got this opportunity as a junior in college. And 33 years later, Where? I love doing it every morning. Where'd you start? I uh, started at Yeshiva College up in Washington Heights. Okay. W-Y-U-R, they call it, Yeshiva University Radio. And at some point during my... Uh, That's very existential, by the way, right? Yes. W-Y-U-R. You are. <laughs> <laughs> very existential. That was not one of our ad campaigns, so maybe it should have been. been. Your ad campaign was, let us just stay on the air. Yeah, right. Somebody make sure to read it. When is this or right? is anybody out there listening? Right. Um, and then after my junior year of college, all of a sudden this job became available, and the person that they called at YU, the search committee called at YU, knew that I would give my right arm for this job. And, you know, my parents thought it would last about... Couple of months, you sure. know, be fed. That's probably why they supported you. <laughs> exactly, yeah. especially waking up early in the morning. What college kid wants to do that? But 33 years later, it's great waking up early in the morning and heading to work. So, right. Um, how did you know that radio was your thing? I mean, were you like a vociferous college student who always liked to sort of dictate your thoughts out loud? I mean, how do you know radio is in you? Um, it's funny. Well, two things. First is that um, I was always a radio addict. You know, just loved listening to the radio and participating in that way as a listener on all the you know, music and talk shows. I was a big fan of Larry King, loved his interview style. Um, Why? Because he asked the questions that nobody else asked. You know, can I tell you a story? I would love. They once asked Larry King about his interview style and he said, let me tell you the difference between me and Ted Koppel. Now, these days, by the way, I have to explain it to Koppel to some of my right, audiences, right, right. but they said, let me explain the difference. There's a big fire, big buildings on fire, right? Large inferno. And Ted Koppel and I both run up, rush up to the scene, and we see the fire chief there. Ted Koppel's going to go over to the fire chief and say, Chief, how'd the fire start? I run over to the chief and say, Chief, why'd you want to become a firefighter? <laughs> <laughs> and that, to me, is the, is the greatest. I just, just for record, just for record, let's go back and think, what was the first question I asked you? Why did you want to get into radio? Did you always have it in you? So basically, I, in your mind right now, have a little king in me. The second thing is that my siblings, all, I'm, the, I'm the fifth of six, and my siblings, especially the older ones, always remind me that I used to run around the house making believe I'm a radio announcer, taking the newspaper in those days, you know, no yeah. internet, taking the newspaper and reading sports scores, you know, and they, of course, would say, you know, if we want to know the scores, we can read it ourselves. No, I've got to recite it to you, yeah. and I'm going to make believe I'm holding a microphone. So yeah, it's always been in me, and I just love it. Um, you started there, and then you sort of continued and stayed in New York for the yeah, most part? Yeah, always doing this show and trying to expand my horizons. I MC a lot of events and got very involved in the Jewish music world, you know, um, things like that. And uh, at some point, with the internet becoming what it became, uh, we decided we just have to expand, provide more programming. You know, we have listeners all around the world because right. of the web. And we're so, you know, we're so Jewish centric. You know, we're providing Jewish programming, you know, for people who we think would be interested in it. And uh, we just said we have to provide more. So we looked for more personalities, including Miriam, who, you know, are great radio hosts and do good interviews or have inspirational, you know, have an inspirational message they can convey. Included them in our format, and now people listen 24 hours a day. Miriam, you all also on the radio. I am on the radio. I. It would, would be. Let me just put it this way: it would be a waste if you weren't. Oh, because thank you. no, you, I, you, know, you walked in and right away. Hey, I got a pedicure, so I'm good. <laughs> I was like, I already love her. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. Thank you. I um, not. I was hired five years ago. I went around little, literally around five years ago, to manage Nahum's career and to be the general manager of the Nahum Siegel Network. The irony was that there was a previous opportunity a couple of years beforehand to start working for Nahum. Nahum's brother had been managing his career, and you know, it was time for him to move and somebody else to come right, in. Eagle? Yeah. yeah. How was Eagle? He's so, doing great. He was my manager for quite a while. I'm sorry. But this is I such a great story. Right. <laughs> so he, um, so, so. This is 2008, right? right? He, 2008. No, I'm just giving you, just giving you a perspective. Uh, so he, not his brother. He's like, how old are you? <laughs> right. I know. So we not just celebrated like, my birthday. How much do you weigh? <laughs> That's where we draw the line. Um, so he, anyway, so his brother had been re reaching out, looking for the right person, and whatever, and a couple of people had suggested my name. So I met with his brother, and we hit it off. And Nahum was, how shall we say, not warm to the idea of being managed by anybody at that moment. Um, but Eagle insisted that I go to the radio show and sit in and observe and whatever. So about an hour and a half. So I walk into the studio, and he looks at me and he says, so you're the famous Marion Wallach. And I said, well, it's more like, so you're the famous Malcolm Siegel. And he looks at me and he goes, you can sit over there. 
Okay, so I sat over there, I took my notes, and you should smirk all you want because the camera's on that face. Um, <laughs> taking my notes and whatever, and about an hour and a half into the show, he looks at me and goes, so what do you think? And this was, again, it was 2008, and I said, where's your video camera? And he said, what are you talking about? And I'm like, why can't anybody see what you're doing? But everybody wants to see what's going on. And you show the video camera in here, and he looks at me and goes, thanks for coming, that's the door. And I looked at him, that's right. That one of my prouder moments. Oh, well, one of my favorite moments. And I looked at him, I'm like this. And I just sat there. I was not, like, I didn't care that he just threw me out of his studio. You had the opportunity to walk out. I know. God, that what was that I That would have been the end exactly. of it. Exactly. That would have been, I would have been living so a different stayed. life. Stayed. I stayed, because I just have that kind of chutzpah. She also knew yes. that she had the backing of my brother, who would right, have freaked if he knew I threw out of the studio. Right, so the show was over. I, yeah, I thanked him, we said goodbye, and literally I'm walking out of the studio, my cell phone rings. And it's Egon. And he's like, how'd it go? I'm like, well, he threw me out of the studio, so I'm not exactly sure. But then it ended up that that was not the right time. And I got Clearly. Pregnant. Right. And I got pregnant with my sixth. And What? And yes. I got, then I got pregnant, and I would not have been able... Like, we weren't working together. You were and pregnant I was, with your sixth. Yes. I, Children? Yes. Sixth child. You yes. Got, so you've been pregnant six times. No, five. I cheated. I had doubles. Five. Oh, yeah. my. Instead of twins. Wow. Exactly. And then went we back really and had another one. I just said, yeah. <laughs> wow. She's amazing. She's no, amazing. no, no doubt. She's right. amazing. But anyway, so then subsequently, after when she was about a year and a half, two years old, and whatever, it started. The conversation started up again, and well, it was a little bit different than that. Yeah, a, a year and a, a year and a yeah. Well, I'll really shorten it. A year and a half, two <laughs> years later, I get a call. I think I was at a Yankee game. Are you at a Yankee game? There's something. We, the we had already st the conversation never completely ended from that from years earlier. Right. Yeah. And she calls me. This I is texted the, you. Texted me. I think I, I, for some reason I think about it was at the Yankee game. Well, I was at the Yankee. You were at the Yankee game. And I in, had in May. Are you sure you're not married? <laughs> May, we just kind of trying. I want to tell you something. People who observe us. And the way we fight, that we must be married. Or, it's or I'm the younger sister that he never <laughs> right. had and Correct. wished he had and tormented. Um, yes. So I get this text or whatever you text me, whatever, and, she, and in the text it reads that I, I'm, I'm leaving. Do I, I do this? Go right ahead. I said, if ever there was a time for you to figure out how to hire me full time, the time is now. And the next morning we met. Because she was a school teacher and she was, I was it teaching was middle school English. Right. So I have uh, a master's in English and a master's in education. I taught middle school English for 15 years. Two very big qualifications for being Asian. There is nothing <laughs> that would have prepared me more than being able Two to teach. Two masters in English. <laughs> no, one. Well, right. Right. Thank Two you. masters, one in English. If you can control a, if you can control a seventh grade classroom of boys, you can do anything. That's right. I can do absolutely anything. I'm not intimidated by anything. Um, so that was it. That and there you and here you are. Here we you are. Lovely souls. All these years later. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Sweet. Yeah. It's good stuff. Fired every Thursday. Exactly. Every Thursday I get fired. Of course. Right. Fired and it's, it's, We're not what? throwing Snapple bottles anymore, Why so we really progressed. We got on this plane last week, and there was a crying baby, a <laughs> row ahead of us, and the people behind us were much more worried about, about sitting us. behind us than sitting two rows behind the front. Because they we were saw yelling at each other. I don't know oh. what we were arguing about, but we walked out of the plane arguing about something. So these people are, are either watching this bickering, and she has to reassure them that at some point this is probably going to stop. Right, I looked at them, like these total strangers, I'm like, it's going to be fine. Right. Right. We're going to calm down, you're not going to notice the baby. The baby. And this is a trip back from Israel. No, actually, no. we, we oh, flew. Okay. We're going to be doing work in, in Venice. In we started November. something called the Jewish Unity Initiative, where we take different cities around the world and try to make an, an impactful journey uh, in that city. So last year, on the anniversary of the Paris attacks, meaning the, the attacks not of November of last year, but of December of the previous where year. Where four Jews were killed in right. a kosher supermarket, the supermarket by yeah. terrorists. So we said a year later, we have to go and show some solidarity with the Parisian Jewish community. So we went. We didn't only broadcast, we also presented a, an amazing uh, music event in the Great Synagogue of Paris for 3,000 people on Hanukkah. Wow. So that was our first Jewish Unity Initiative. Then, in March, when we... When Everyone we, kept on asking, where are you going next? Right, it was where such a success. Next? Everyone said, okay, what's next? And people wanted us to go to Cuba, and Morocco, and Moscow, and Greece, and all these different yeah. places. My where husband would prefer the be communist countries be on the <laughs> right. right. and, and South Africa. We got all these recommendations. And then when the Antwerp uh, bombing happened, everyone's calling right. us. But oh, next, I, we assume you're going, going to Antwerp. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not the Red Cross. Right. But we did decide that we were going to explore, because it's the 500th commemoration, 500th year commemoration of the Venetian ghetto, the Jewish ghetto in Venice, we're going to explore or maybe we should go ahead and do a Jewish Unity Initiative trip there and tell educate the our audience, tell the story, and, and show solidarity with the few Jews that remain there, and again, have an impact really worldwide with this type of event. So we went for this, I guess we'd call it pilot trip, yeah. advanced trip, to see if it's feasible. 
concluded that it is. We're going to be doing it in November, and this is and this is why we were on a flight. We were coming back from all these meetings in okay. Venice, right. and but and so the at least it was the end of your trip. No, no. This was the beginning of no, it. this was the first moments of this, this journey, a fight that started in Newark airport and <laughs> right. spilled onto the plane. Right. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. What was the fight about? New Yorkers, by the way. Clet, what did you say? What was the fight about? Well, who knows? We can't um, keep track. Can, can get money, right. Remember. But classic New Yorkers were in, um, we're working out the details of the trip for November. And we have a team of 11 people flying with us in November, et cetera, et cetera. And we're trying to figure out the best way to get everyone from the airport to the great. hotel. Yeah. And the people we're working with in Venice are like, well, you should take a cab because the taxi, taxi right. sorry, not a cab, right. the taxis fit 11 to 12 people plus a bag. And Malcolm and I look at each other and go, that's a big, that's, that's a big cab. And we're like, well, how does that work? Like they said, oh, they'll bring the bags to your hotel. I'm like they, they bring it right up to your hotel. They're like saying it over and over again. We're like, I don't understand. They're like, the taxis are boats. I said, oh, oh. <laughs> so oh they stupid. have no wheels. Oh, I see. I see that. That's how it's a lot of people. Right, exactly. And then they're like, you just take the bus. I'm like, the bus has no wheels. So like, of course it has no wheels. I'm like, right, right, oh, okay. right, exactly. Venice. Disconnect. Venice. Yep, yes. I was there a couple years ago. It's unbelievable. It's, it is. It is. It is. It was a little dirtier than I thought. I guess I thought it was just going to be this like absolutely pristine, gorgeous, just like the paintings and whatnot. And it was a little like, where? Well, what time of year were you there? Because I hear that during the summer when it's hotter. It was in the summer. Yeah, yeah. that they say it's the worst in terms of that area. Yeah, right. but but the humidity was. But you know what else we picked up from that trip, and this may speak to that. They're very, you know, they they won't expand buildings. They won't add on. They won't right. renovate to the, uh, only to the degree that they're allowed. They sort of like it. The way it has yeah. been, yes. like I don't know if they make an effort to beautify it or to to right. do much that would I don't know clean it up a bit or. But well, it, people are going to come regardless. Right. Um, oh, that's for sure. You know, the yes. place is just packed. Yeah, right. it was it was pretty crazy. Tell me, you stay in different rooms at least. Yeah. Otherwise, oh. you would kill. <laughs> 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 I feel like I need to ask the tough questions. Me and Larry King. King. For multiple yeah. reasons, I'd prefer to stay in different cities, but it doesn't always work out. We've actually stayed at different hotels. Wait, many times. Oh, wow. Many times. If it wasn't for Hotels.com getting us the best rates in the same place, yes. That's very funny. Tell me about the show. Tell me about the show. Show is an amazing array of everything, uh, an entire potpourri of anything that the uh, Jewish community would want to hear, from Jewish music to, to community event information, to bringing on government officials who want to specifically speak uh, to the Jewish community, uh, a lot of news about Israel, um, anything that goes on in Israel makes it onto the show, from the, and I don't mean to minimize it, but from the smallest terrorist attack or anything that has happened locally yeah. in one small area of Israel to obviously, you know, any major story. Um, every week we do an in-depth analysis every Friday morning of, of the news of the week, uh, not just from Israel, but anything around the world that affects the Jewish world. Right. Um, and it's really, and, and the truth is that, uh, there's still plenty more we could do, you know, yeah. with more time. It's, uh, there's just so much going on. Are you a little edgy? Like, are you like sort of the, the, the Howard Stern of like morning radio for the Jews? I think just the opposite. I think that, um that the show has been, and really our network in general, has been a unifier, yeah, a unifier, right. very, you know, um, very um, straightforward, um, if anything, using caution to avoid topics that would, that would disturb certain people in the community. We want everybody. Yeah. We want everybody from the people who are barely affiliated to the people that are, you know, completely orthodox observant. Right. Everyone to feel comfortable in the environment. It was, not to interrupt, but it was an edgy move for, not, just to explain how important it is to stay mainstream, it was an edgy move for Nathan to hire me in the first place. I mean, you seem, it seemed, I think so too. Right. Yeah. It's, um, no, no. No, for so many reasons. No question about it. For so many reasons. Um, but, you know, in terms of the orthodox population, having a woman in that position, etc., and having a woman that was going to represent Nahum and travel with Nahum, etc., it is a most unusual circumstance, shall we say. But... That many people still have not gotten used to. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I'm uncomfortable with it, just sitting next to I you. I don't blame right you. Now. It's yeah. a lot of tension. It's a lot of tension exactly. going on right now. Because we're angry with each other half the time. I'm, gonna, I'm so used to it, I realize it's tension. That's funny. <laughs> um, but, so, that was, that in and of itself was a move. Right. Um, but and the first year, I'm, again, I'm sorry for interrupting. No. But the first year was a million times worse than this. Oh. It was like, 
It was impossible. So and just for just people getting that used... are listening, they actually do like each other, even though we all they talked about well. is how much they don't get along. We get they along do very well. Get along. And more importantly, our spouses get along, right. our families get Everybody along. Get along. Well, yeah. between the two of you, you have what, 112 children? Close. Exactly, yeah. right? And 12 six to be dogs. exact. <laughs> six dogs. I don't even. Right, it's the type of thing like when you have 12 <laughs> children between the two of them, you don't need to exaggerate. <laughs> right. <laughs> they really have 12 children right. between the right. two exactly. And a lot of the kids get along really nicely. Like, yeah. they just. They really How old is your youngest? Both of you. My youngest is eleven. Mine is turning seven. She would not let me to say she was six. She is turning seven. <laughs> and how old is your oldest? Eighteen. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. Not from and triplets. mine's twenty-four, and the triplets are eighteen. Right. Not from triplets. So, so my had... triplets and Miriam's eighteen-year-old are all now in Israel during their gap year together studying. Wow. Yeah. Right. And so you have one together. and then triplets, and then one triplets and two more. So you had one, then triplets, then another one. Correct. Don't you want to meet his wife? And then another, another, another one, one a year later, that. and then another one after that, many right. years later. Yeah. I, I know that there's so many fascinating things about you, but I'm, I'm having a hard time just processing <laughs> the concept of more than two children right now. <laughs> right. I, 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 how do you, how do you, do you do it? After three, it doesn't matter. What does that mean? Well, three at a time is... No, that I can't. Three, I'm turning to so... you like you know what I'm talking about. You have no idea because you went from one to four. <laughs> right, I went from one to four. Oh, right, and when I was delivering, when I was in, in labor with my twins, and it was a C-section, and they took out baby A, and I looked to my husband and go, look, we have four kids, and they took out the next one, look, we have five kids, uh, look how that just worked. It was just... And then somehow you had another one? Yeah, she's amazing. I've said that before. She's, oh, and she's, she's not even six. She's almost seven. Right. You would never know she's... Wow. She's the... She she runs the house. She is that person who everyone's afraid of. She's you. Yeah, and I was just going to say. Hey, hey, hey. He's like, you get away with it. I yeah, can't say it. That's yeah. true. So yeah. that's true, by the way. Exactly. Yeah. Is this like a busy time, like yesterday, today? Everyone yeah. getting ready for Rosh Hashanah. Does everyone call them with their crazy ticket stories? You, I don't know. You probably didn't hear my ticket story from yesterday, just about getting into shul and. Oh. <clears throat> that that, that is a big messy. issue. I was got a call today about that. That's yeah. a big issue in the community. Was about, it my dad? About, <laughs> but in general, the whole topic of charging for seats on oh, the holidays. That it's is off. a topic that's across the board in yeah, the Yeah, everybody. I, I heard all thing about this yesterday because yeah. it, and they're so expensive. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to a certain places, yeah, it would it's be very terrible. Expensive. They're I mean, really expensive. Yeah. So you have to do the whole like ticket scan. You're on StubHub. Oh, for <laughs> sure. It's like two tickets <laughs> to get six <laughs> people in. Nachum had somebody. Do you know that Mike Dube yesterday, right? right? Nachum had an interview yesterday with a guy named Mike Dube, I know Mike Dube. who runs Sharing Seats. Do you know yeah. Mike Dube? Yeah. yeah. So Anyways, through, uh, Josh. Who right. I'm sure is watching. Right, right. And, but but Mike has like this ticket thing, right? Yes. Like, he started this really. It's a really thing. phenomenal organization where basically he gives children who are in some kind of terrible situation, whether medical it's situation, medical situation, emotional situation, etc. Um, he gets somebody to give up who are basically not using their their uh, their sporting event seats. Um, he gives them an opportunity for a great night out or to meet the the sports personality or whoever it is. And um, he's done great, great work. But somebody texted me. I didn't tell you that. Somebody texted me. Can Mike do get me shared seats for somebody who plays on Yom Kippur? <laughs> he's like, how do I get into the Lincoln Square Synagogue? Does Mike do have a connection? It's true. Of course it is. a lottery system or something. Yeah, yeah. A, well, the good part is that, especially in New York, there's so many free services now. Oh, no, exactly. there are a lot that take advantage of this and try to attract people. Yeah, but the free by... services, you know what? That doesn't factor in like the guilt that my parents place <laughs> oh. on me for not schlepping up to West. <laughs> Chester <laughs> with two little nothing little pitzkulas that I have to like dress up and think my parents think like for one second these guys are gonna sit in seats right no we all sit down it takes us like an hour to all get in is that one down can you move over you can't save seats move down move oh. up get that this one and that one and we all come in and we're sitting there of course for 30 seconds and then my little one's out and my dad's like I'll walk out I'm like no 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 you, you made us right. come here you stay you're staying foot. here I'll go out that's with right one. every year it's the same thing of course right. and then in our family it's so you think she's going to be here next year can yeah, we get her seat not. do you really i mean does she need both seats this is the conversation Very fine. every single year and i'm like all right but we vote off the island do we want to get rid of her can we get rid of her, we get rid of her? i don't even know how you guys do it with all your kids to effort to get everybody in there we're all the lottery system eeny meeny miny go okay well now i have three in israel so you know, right. there'll be a lot more room in our section <laughs> right and my oldest her seat is uh, already accounted for by my future niece so there's no extra room um so I did a radio show on Sirius when I was at the Today Show, Today Show Radio, and I've got a ton to say, and I'm always talking. I fall asleep talking, I wake up talking, I'm talking when I'm not talking, I'm talking, talking, talking. And um, 
sat down for the radio and are you nervous? I'm like, not nervous at all. I'm going to talk. I talk here. I talk there. I'm going to talk everywhere. Here I go. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. I had this producer. We had all these people. My agent was there. And then the radio show starts and I was like, hello. That's my favorite topic. <laughs> What's up? I'm like, can we take questions? We weren't even in it eight seconds. I'm like, any questions? So there's some, and I do television and it does not make me nervous at all, but there is something, and I do radio in college also, there's something about radio where you and only you have to dictate time and tempo and conversation and attitude and all of it. Absolutely. For people that don't realize, like, it's a very tall order. It is not easy at all. And and you've been doing it so long and, you know, I, I can't even imagine. Miriam and I uh, heard of, uh, of somebody who had just started a radio show. And we were skeptical about whether he'd be good or not. And I said to her, exactly as I predicted, that two minutes into this 30-minute radio show, he had said all he had prepared. Is, Everything he had prepared. It was Donald Trump. He, he, right. was, <laughs> he was already repeating in minute number three when right. he already had said the first couple of minutes right. he didn't know where to go. Right. But as an addendum to all this, I, I always point out that um, I don't think you know how anybody's going to be on the air until that microphone gets right. turned on. Yeah. Like, you, you'll meet someone, or we're, we're looking for talent. And we said, this guy's a great inspirational speaker. This person's a you know wonderful interviewer. And look at the way they sit on a forum and, right. and, and you know and, and are able to conduct a conversation. But until that microphone goes on, even in an interview style, not just as a solo, but even as an interviewee, until that microphone goes oh, on, you have no idea how they're gonna be. And, and it's fascinating. And when it works the other way, when it's someone who you don't think will be that good on the air and they end up being great, it's an amazing feeling. I contributed on Fox Business for a while and I was doing I was doing T V with um, um, oh my gosh, Stuart Arnie. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, Stu. Right, brain freeze. <laughs> sorry, Stu. Sorry, Jake. Sorry, everybody else. Anyway, sorry, everybody else in the team. Right. Um, and it's a totally different skill set. And I, I know I'm a thousand times more comfortable doing radio and being being with the mic than being on camera. But what people don't understand often is that they think it's the same thing. I'm like, it's completely not. It's, it's completely a totally different. different medium. It's a totally different intimate experience with your audience when you are sitting there and you're on the air and there's no cameras it's just you and a mic you are speaking one-on-one -on -one and it's a it, it's not only disarming but it's also you are you are naked in front of the world it's and there is no fakery in radio if you're faking it everyone knows it and when it comes to what i was experiencing on cable tv which is certainly different than network television but I imagine, but being on cable TV, I could not have spent more time in hair and makeup. <laughs> um, and I spent God knows how long figuring out with a stylist what I was wearing that morning and putting outfits together. Wow. But when you go to radio, it's you and the audience. Yeah, half the time you're not even wearing clothes. I've got no pants on. No, I know. Um, <laughs> it's just <laughs> that. Nor should you. It's, thank you. It's just that's the way it goes. And. And people don't un people don't understand that we we have somebody who um, has a tremendous amount of talent, and it's taken him time to realize that he can stand up in front of a crowd of five thousand people and command that audience. But when there's nobody in the room, and it's you and the producer, the engineer, and a mic, you, you either turn it on, or either you have it or you don't, and you can develop it. But there is that there is that appreciation for radio that goes beyond its. It is completely innate. Yeah, no question about right. it. Right, it's something internal. Sometimes you, you know, I'll hear somebody on the air, and I will appreciate why it is that they're making it, what, what it right. is about them that's engaging with the audience. And people will think, oh, they're a dime a dozen, and not a dime a dozen. It is, it, this is the reason why only a few people really make it, or make it you know, with longevity, because it is such a difficult thing to do to keep the, to keep the audience engaged, and to right. sound interesting, and to keep coming up with you know, different ways of, of presenting things. Um, it's 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 fascinating to me how how this medium is really different from any other type of communication, and until, I think until you've actually done it or tried it, it's hard to appreciate. It also doesn't agree. necessarily translate. I mean, I know that I've been hired to MC various events, and I'm terrible. I'm terrible. People. I can sit and argue with about this. Well, you, right, there's nothing to argue about. There's a speech she gave right, three right. years ago that was still fighting with her. Yeah, it was a good no, speech. No, come on. I haven't even worn that dress since. It's so bad. But um, there is this, it's true. There's, it doesn't always translate. And it, when people make these assumptions and whatever, and I appreciate every opportunity. It's right. not like I'm ever turning anything down. I'd go back on TV in a second. But I know that this is my comfort zone. This yeah. is something I have become, thank God, 
under his tutelage and his guidance, I've become, thank God, good at. In my case, I and you know this because yeah. you book stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather do Q and A oh, because it is nothing my, makes him happier. Nothing right. makes it happier. Right. Makes me happier. And if someone says, "Can I have a statement from you about a book that you just read or about a, an album you just heard?" Yeah. Can I have a statement? We never rewrote that statement. <laughs> fight, 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 fight. Oh my gosh! Um, if someone says, "You know," I said, "Ask me a question." Like I can't even make a statement right, right. without, and the question can be, "What do you think of the book?" Wait, they, I, just, fine, right, you need right, I just need to have a question. Sure. Out Throw there, something you know? over the plate, and he'll hit it. But yeah, how um, how political does it get in the mornings? Come on in, you guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, There's they have sneakers. They want to know about keeping their shoes on. I told them to take them off. Okay. Oh yeah, but you brought forty seven hundred other sneakers, so <laughs> you took those off. That's awesome. You can send those two quit in Harper seats. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, we're usually outside, but I can't get the weather to Isn't quite great. Right. Isn't the great? Yeah, yeah, those are fantastic. Those were great. They, those were good Hanukkah roses. There were a lot of, had a lot of mine. You, um, you guys don't fit in those seats. But no, it's yeah. not single size. No. <laughs> you so, take off the armors. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Okay. You don't even know how funny that is. You don't have a story that is. We're on this flight to Venice. I apologize, world. We're on this flight to Venice, and Nahum clearly needs to sit business, but the business class ticket was eight grand, and I said, folks, someone's got to be here. So I got, we got him two coach seats, and figuring the armrest will go up, he'll sit between the two seats, and, you know, between the three of us, between the two of us, there'll be three seats, I'll get half, he'll get two and a half, it'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> The armrests did not go up. Oh no! So I will well, show you. Well, they got they went up a uh, certain distance, the most that? frustrating distance you can imagine. <laughs> it was I, just I, I you know, it was so ridiculous because you're gonna cry. It was so, so hard. ridiculous. It was and terrible. In, in, in his moment of, of pain, you took a picture. Yeah, like, and by the way, pictures. real pain, like yeah. physical ten pain. Pictures. One physical one pain. One when I can take ten. That's great. This is Nafim sleeping <laughs> with the armrest. <laughs> Here, let me just check. World, can you see this? This is, it's so sad. It's so sad, but the funniest, I can't, God gives me material. What am I supposed to do? One second, here's another one. This is a different angle, just so you can see just how uncomfortable he is. Here, this is the other one. I mean, that's... I know, it's tragic. I'm sorry. I would have I would have made the $8,000 investment for that. I know. Well, don't worry. Normally, November. Normally we do, but this it didn't it fall was, for it. But, right, it just... But it, it, it's funny, because at, at my side, it leads to some very interesting conversations. For instance, Mary was tying her sneaker on the plane, and I say, and I turn to her and I say, "What's it like walking into a store just buying a pair of sneakers?" <laughs> right. What is it like? Right. I've never walked into a store and bought a. I wore a size 15 when I was 14 years old. Wow! So I have never walked into a store wow. and, and just bought a pair of sneakers. We're sitting on this plane. And half the time, this is what he's saying, I'm in so much pain, I don't fit in the seat. I don't want to fit in the seat, I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much pain. But look, you're still together. Yeah, you're still, still on the radio. Oh, as a team? We're still Yeah. Good. You still but, have millions of people that listen. Thank God. Thank God. Right? It didn't, God. it didn't bust the tower. You're still standing strong. Thank I love God. it. Yeah. yeah, it's funny stuff. God gives us a tremendous amount of material. A lot of material. We yeah. just keep growing, thank God. Yeah, um, what was I asking you? Oh, how, does it get... Crazy political. Oh right, we were talking about politics. That Does that cross over into religious circles? By politics, meaning Trump Hillary politics? Yes. Oh. oh, I was thinking Israel. Um, Sorry, that's where my mind went. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I think anybody who's tuned into us wants to hear the perspective of our guests that we bring on right. you know, vis-a-vis -vis Israel. Yeah. Israel has not been a major topic in this election campaign. No, except that BB came in and spent right. 90 minutes with Trump and only right. 30 minutes with Hillary. Sure and boy, they wrote, they, that story yeah, had legs. They wrote like 17 hours. That was it. They're not talking about foreign policy. That's it. Nobody's, wow. nobody's addressing the, these important issues, although well, maybe in the next debate they actually will. I doubt it. Yeah, it, it seems that they won't. Trump and just needs a contact to put a build walls with. So yeah, we don't that's, that information. That's why he was meeting with Phoebe so long. Right. Uh, and um, in general, everyone, I think, basically knows that the majority of the Jewish community in our country is going to be voting for Hillary Clinton. I think that's obvious. I think in the more right wing religious crowd, some of the people we speak to, you know, there'll be more of a Trump feel. And the only real issue, I think, that uh, intrigues the. Uh, uh, our average listeners is whether there will be a race in Florida and Ohio and other places right. where there might be, you know, an yeah, influence confident. in terms of Jewish voting. Yeah. Um, but that's it. It hasn't. It has. I, we thought. We really. We thought it would get. I'm surprised. Much it more. Yeah, much more aggressive, and that Israel will become a bigger issue. But it really hasn't. It's not because right. one candidate doesn't really know much about foreign policy, 
And yeah, and then Trump doesn't either, right? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny. So you do radio. That's what you, that's what you do, yeah. yes. Well, yeah. you set me up. And that was good. It was a softball. It was nice. like wiffle ball. Yeah. But of course, we were in Israel in July, and the first question everyone kept on asking is, so what's happening in that country of yours? Mm. But this is what's funny, and, and that is that there's more interest and more you know, on-the-street talk about our election in Israel, there was here. Oh, for sure. You know, it, it, it's like that. Because it's 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 live TV there. Right. It's reality. It's reality. It is. Correct. It's the reality funniest TV. thing they've ever seen. It's we the funniest thing we've ever seen. Well, well, I don't know that it's funny. It's well, well it's a little sad. It's that exhausting. It's scary. But yeah, I mean, yeah. people keep asking who we're voting for. The answer is clear. Well, the answer is clear that I'm not sure yet. Right, and I'm voting for my husband. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Other than Does that, he have a chance. By the, way. by the way, my mother-in-law won't vote for him. Yes. She doesn't want to leaving the business. She said to me, she said to me, she's like, why are you wasting your vote on him? And I looked at Stephen, I'm like, do you hear the way your mother talks about you? I said, you can't even get your mother a vote for you? Really? So he says to me, he's like, he like rolls his eyes. I'm like, Ma, you do not want to vote for your son? She's like, well, why would you waste a vote? No, she's, she's, she's right. I'm writing in Stephen Wallach. She, this oh, is her yeah, protest. This is, this is the Mary Mollick version of a protest vote. I it's take easy. the more conventional route of just not voting. Right. But, but I'm voting perfect. for the most responsible Republican I know, Wait, Stephen Wallach. That's the problem, is people are going to abstain and nobody's going to vote, and right. it's just going to be like would last Would you rather have Stephen Wallach in the White House? I would probably no. rather have Stephen <laughs> Wallach in the White House. Well, so you say that now. <laughs> well, I see the other You channel. want him to go over your credit card statements? I don't think so. It's really funny. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Why don't you guys do something together? Like, I, is it? We do a show each show together. together. No, show. not a regular show. This, this is a show. Oh, this we, we is know a show. Right. Remember, we we we, <laughs> we had to take a trip to Rochester, so we actually planned to. We asked our engineer for equipment. We planned to do podcasts as we're driving. Right. I mean, it never materialized because we had 400 other things to fight about. But <laughs> it, it, That's the show! Right, I show. know. It is a show. Trust me, it is a if show. It, if it works out and it becomes a big thing, can you just remember that of I course, said little this? little editorial credits. This is editing yeah. it right Well, it's all about the interviewer. Oh, it don't is. announce her voice, sir. <laughs> it is. She doesn't deserve it. She voice. thinks it's a bad thing when I use my announcer voice. That's your announcer I th- voice? I think it's flattering, frankly. Oh, that is very good. <laughs> that's a very good announcer voice. That's how it started in Newark. Because you announced her voice, the TSA guy. Right. That was that's, the, right. that's how the whole thing started. The fight and then the Newark TSA airport. guy took away my almond butter. Right. Oh, oh that's yeah. another story. I had mine taken away so many times. Yes, but I'll Do tell you. Do you know that it's illegal? Almond butter to bring it on the plane was illegal. Yeah. Would, you, would you like to know what is legal? Here, I'll show you what's legal. This is the crazy, this is not the crazy part of Miriam. This is totally on. No, my almond butter's been taken away so many times, but why do I keep bringing it back? I guess yeah, a different airport. No, because you're waiting for somebody to screw up. So I can I'll bring a thing of $14 almond butter? This is mace. Okay? This gets on the plane every single time. Do they know it's mace? They, it goes through the scanner, goes through the x-ray. Now, obviously, the knife does Look not. at the size all right. of those. All right, all right, all right, all right. Not the ones in the body. Schneider for one day. That's not him. What a great reference. I mean, who's even thinking about the mace? The, the, the TSA folks must pass out at the size of that thing. This is nothing. I took some keys what, off. Uh, what is this? No, oh, this, this was my mother's day present. I'm sorry I'm seeing the camera again. What in God's name? Are you joking? No, but it also has a toothpick and a tweezer. You're missing the point. The toothpick. First of all, look at this. Like, yeah. I, I lift less than this. I'm not joking. If you can... Oh, this is in my bag all the time. But let's get back to the no, TSA no, no, no. Let's, Let me see how many right. reward cards you have. So you go I don't even know use them. <laughs> is there anyone you've said no to? Yes, I stopped. Hey, my kids put it in the passbook in my phone, which I don't know how to look use either. Look at these reward... How many stores do you go? Food Town, ShopRite, yep. Grand Union. Um, yep. that's not even a store anymore. No, that's okay. Yeah, it's great news. Century 21 has a reward yes. card. Sure. Well, no, you're like George Costanza. I know. I like when the When he opened Schneider up reference. that big wallet and there was like, oh, right. one free yogurt at any local Esso station in the right. greater Orlando area. He's like, I'm going to need that. Put it back in his so wallet. let's get back to my mace. This gets on the plane every single time because this doesn't come up. But yet, almond butter. Almond butter. And Nahum oh. had his right guard taken away right. once. And I looked yeah. at the guy and I said, do you understand that the mace is right next to his right guard? But he's like, the right guard's not allowed. I'm like, you know what? I can't help you people. That is I just can't so help. But let me take so. off my shoes. But yeah. you get the mace on the plane. You guys are great. I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, oh, you there you go again. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> like a disease. I know. Okay. I'm on a roll. Well, I, I, I'm wildly. Oh, and every time in Italy, though, I would say thank you in Italian. Oh, that was 
was it. She freaked out. Right. Don't it. be that guy. Why? You would, Why? But you would do it a thousand times. No. I, did I do it? Th there have been times when, I you, will tell when you. you go ahead and use your abilities to speak another language. Well, when we're in Israel and I speak Hebrew, I will respond in Hebrew. Of course, though. Oh, you don't like that he'll, oh, he doesn't speak Italian, but when he says thank you, he'll say grazie. Yeah. yeah. Don't like, he's not just supposed to do it? Yeah. You can't walk out of the store without saying an appropriate thing. Right. So and you don't want to sound like an American. Yeah. No, 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 you don't want to sound like an American. You're otherwise, your Italian completely improves on this. This is so, this is good. You guys, this is good. It's rich. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. But it's really good. Yeah. Thank you. So if you ever run out of topics, just, just. Fight. <laughs> oh, we never run out of topics. Right. Okay. But we just fought fight over a, we fought over listening to a podcast and our reactions to the same podcast. It's right. Are you a West Winger? No. No. Right, we can stay friends. Right. It's fine. So you know who I am. I'm a Seinfelder. Right. Oh. I so dropped we, 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 can, we can certainly fight about something having What's your favorite from? Seinfeld line? There's only one answer. Oh, so I hope we get it right. No, no, no. The, if, if you're going to bring this back to the, the the only episode, it's like asking what's your favorite Barry Manilow song, and people say Copacabana. Like, the, what is that? That's not even an answer. Is that Wilde would say Mandy? Yeah, I was thinking yeah. Mandy's up no, there. It's Copacabana. Weekend. No, the answer is Weekend in New England. That's the answer. There's no opinion. Yeah, that's the answer. Right. So, I write Jewish Boy, by the way, Barry Manilow. No, I write the songs as not. That's like saying Copacabana. No, I write the songs with right. Guys, the answer is Weekend in New England. <laughs> it's not. Okay, so then let's get back to Weekend in New England even go? Last night I, I waved goodbye, oh, now it seems years. I'm back in the city where nothing is clear. Um, you don't know that song? Well, well you're, you're too young. You're too Oh, we had somebody on Fine, yesterday. Who does, no, no, we had a singer on yesterday who didn't know who Simon and Garfield. Yeah, but oh, we have a singer coming back on today. Okay, well, you're covered that Swing it up. <laughs> yeah. You're not inviting that guy back on, are you? Um, no, no, she was great. No, she wasn't. Yeah, she, she was, was great. great. She was a great singer. What's your favorite episode? Give me an episode. Well, at the Chinese restaurant. Oh. Really? Oh. No, the, the, the is... again. I'm sorry. That's it. Two words. words. Seinfeld four. That's Seinfeld all you four. That's it. That's all you got to hear, and I'm done. Um, <laughs> That's the funniest line. That, that is a very funny line. Yeah. The backwards episode was brilliant. <laughs> no, oh. episode was no other television show since right. or before oh, has yeah. ever done anything right. so incredibly brilliant. Do you like funny? Do you like comedians and cars getting coffee? So I, I never really got into it the way I, I I'm with you on that. Oh. Too much distraction. They yeah. don't let them do the interview. They don't let it breathe. I, I, exactly. That's what I think. They it, don't let just, it breathe. They, they, they think people something. watching need so much stimulation. It's I know. Ridiculous. I need yeah. stimulation. So. I liked it. Anyway, well, you guys, this was great. I, I oh, absolutely you. love this. Uh, I, I was and a happy, happy New Year to you. We didn't even talk about Rosh Hashanah. I'm exhausted as well. I'm going to take a nap. I got to go home and make call. Yeah, exactly. Um, you should have called. You should have this morning. I have no carbs except for on uh, Rosh Hashanah with the challah. Um, nice will, you, will you come back and, and bring many things to eat for me? Oh, are you please? kidding? Yeah, yeah. why not? Sure. We'll, we'll raid every kosher restaurant before we show up. Right, I love it. Oh, well, you can come to my kitchen. You remind me of my friend Michelle, Michelle Sorcher. Is I know Michelle Sorcher. We know Michelle Sorcher. Michelle's like my best friend. We Randy. Kids. We were in yeah, Randy, right. Randy, Randy works for us. <laughs> right, Randy. This is real Jewish geography. Now it's starting. That's it. Now we can come closer. You know what we always say? You can't lose when you play Jewish geography. That's right. <laughs> and we saw Randy's brother in Chicago. We did yes. a show in Chicago two weeks ago. But Randy and I have known each other since we're like nine. Well, Michelle was one of the first people I met here in New York. She's like my best friend. We were just in Florida together. So funny. Should I call her? I'm Do you know her. that her father? I know her father. Her dad came. I was leaving the Upper West Side. I moved down to Midtown Manhattan, 20 minutes, 15 minutes away. And I we couldn't get the big furniture out. So she brought her dad in <laughs> to move all my big furniture oh, out because gosh. we weren't allowed to use the industrial. We wanted to schlep oh, it all and sneak it onto the regular funny. civilian <laughs> elevator. So we had to pretend that these were You just broke we all co-op. Well, her so, father's yeah. been a, a fan of ours for 33 years. Yeah, and Randy's been on the air for And Randy's been on the air for like And she's great. She's a great radio right. answer. Yes. Turn on the microphone. Yeah, her, she's yeah. Great. Well, Randy. Randy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Michelle's the she worst. She's great. <laughs> Randy. I she love has an Michelle. unbelievable voice, and yeah. just, she's great. Yeah, she's great. Randy is spot on. A phenomenal disposition. Right. I wish she was on more, but, you know, she's raising she's a family life. and working. Yeah, exactly. Right. But we're making room for her. Like, we're trying to... She, we're, we're getting her back on. She's very talented. Yeah, we're trying to arrange our programming. Nice. With people that's, every that's a week. compliment to say I'm like Michelle Sorcher. Yeah, no, I love uh, Michelle. Yeah. I love Michelle. should be that thin. I mean. No, listen. <laughs> I, here's what, I love Michelle to death. She's like my sister. But nobody bitches as well as Michelle. Oh. Michelle is the best. I've never in my life met anyone who can complain as well as Michelle does. She's so good at it. Like She's She someone. needs <laughs> to get paid and find a way for someone to pay her for how well she complains about everything. You know, I tell her every day. This is not... She's great. She's the best. She's great. Uh, and I love the whole family. 
Um, this was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank I, you for having us on. I really enjoy you guys. Thank You're you know, obviously extremely talented to do anything for 33 years. So <laughs> keep doing it and have a great holiday. Thank you. You too. Uh, I'm happy to Try to separate and stay sane for a little bit. Well, that's why there's a holiday, so yeah, we can't talk, exactly. to each other. talk to each other. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Yeah. Um, and uh, and come back literally anytime. And I will just sit back and, and let you guys take over. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very awesome, much. Guys. Happy oh, this is Miriam and Nafim. They have... Uh, AM in the AM. JM in the AM in the AM. Put away the Nakam Siegel Network. AM in the Nakam Siegel Network. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. I'm still live. I'm staying live.